the problem uh, is um, to understand not only what Newton did as a mathematician, but how he communicated his ideas to others. Newton is well known for his reluctance to publish his mathematical ideas, and there are historians who have uh, uh, defined him as, as a somewhat neurotic character who doesn't want to reveal his ideas to others. Contrary to this view, if we look more carefully to Newton's correspondence, and if we uh, consider the circulation of his uh, mathematical manuscripts, we discover that Newton um, let some of his mathematical research circulate. In Newton's times, print culture had not uh, obliterated what we might call scribal culture, that is, uh, the communication of ideas via correspondence and via manuscript circulation. Quite the contrary, Newton's times were times where these means of communicating results were very much used. Now, Newton soon came into contact with, uh, I would say, a mathematical intelligencer. Um, called John Collins, not a great mathematician, but uh, a mathem an enthusiast about mathematics, who, very much like Mersenne in France, uh, coordinated a network of correspondence. Newton was caught into this net through Barrow. Isaac Barrow, uh, sent in 1669 a short tract uh, that he asked Newton to prepare for Collins. And this short tract is a little masterpiece entitled De Analisi per Equaciones Infinitas, on the analysis by means of infinite equations. And you might ask me now, what are infinite equations? What a strange term. Well, infinite equations are infinite series, and this is in itself something interesting, because series were seen as part of algebra, were seen as an extension of algebra. Algebra, common algebra, deals with finite equations, polynomial equations, uh, that Descartes considered in the geometry. But now we deal with infinite equations, with infinite series, and therefore we can deal with uh, uh, curves that Descartes did not consider. Now, the De Analisi is a short tract that uh, reached Collins in 1669, and Collins made a copy and uh, sent the original back to Newton. Collins circulated the De Analisi and uh, circulated uh, some of the results uh, contained in the De Analisi. Some of these results, I would say most of these results, had been uh, achieved by James Gregory in the same time. These results have to do with, with uh, for instance, uh, power series expansion of the trigonometrical function, the arc sin series, the sin series, the cos series, and also the series for the logarithm and so on and so forth, and how this series can be used uh, in uh, rectification of curves and in uh, the calculation of curvilinear surfaces. Now, Collins was clearly interested with this new entry in the world of mathematicians uh, with which he was in touch, and uh, proposed to, to Newton uh, to correct, annotate a work by a Dutch mathematician, Kinkhuizen. Um, Kinkhuizen had uh, written in, in Dutch uh, a work on algebra that uh, was translated into Latin 
and um, Collins asked Newton to uh, annotate and uh, update this work. So Newton began uh, working on this project and his uh, annotations are very interesting because uh, uh, in these annotations Newton thinks about how algebra should be applied to geometry and which are the best ways to uh, translate a geometrical problem into a, an algebraic problem. Um, one of the things that Newton did here was to study different coordinate systems for instance and which coordinate system uh, gives you the best uh, solution and so on and so forth. Now in the correspondence between Newton and Collins you will find that um, in the at the beginning of the 70s uh, Collins proposed to Newton several uh, several projects which uh, included not only the addition of King Kuisen, but also the printing of Newton's optical lectures, the printing of the De Analisi, actually, uh, and uh, they are discussing how uh, to print the De Analisi, and Newton is clearly interested in that. But as the correspondence develops during the 70s, we find Newton more and more reluctant to follow Collins in going uh, in, in, in printing uh, his mathematical works. For instance, there is a famous letter of 1672, May 25, in which Newton says that by the little use I've made of the press, I think that, no, I I don't want to print my mathematics, I don't want to print uh, the optical lectures because um, I'm not happy about what happened with the paper on the theory of light that Newton printed in 1672. The publication of, in 1672, of uh, <coughs> the paper on light is a very crucial moment in Newton's career as an author. The paper was criticized and uh, uh, was criticized and uh, Newton disliked this very much and uh, so he offers to Collins the following explanation. I, I want to live uh, uh, my life in full tranquility and I don't want to print my works, neither my optical works nor my mathematical works. In 1675 we find Collins writing to J James Gregory about Newton and Barrow who are not interested in, um, in printing, uh, in, in pursuing mathematical researches. So we have, let us say so, uh, the impression that uh, uh, in the 1670s Newton uh, revealed um, a certain anxiety, a certain reluctance to print his mathematics. So uh, we have seen that um, um, Collins is uh, uh, proposing Newton to print his mathematics. At the beginning of the 70s Newton uh, is uh, apparently interested and then you know he, it's too much to say that he rejects uh, the project but uh, he begins to be difficult about it and he shows a certain anxiety about this. So that uh, in the end uh, Collins, uh, in, especially in 1675, begins to be very worried about uh, what's happening and uh, he begins to understand that Newton will not leave him publishing anything. Well, actually, we should add that uh, Newton knew that Collins had other correspondence and uh, Collins 
of course, um, gave some details about what he had received from Newton to others. And Newton had revealed to Collins especially his work on infinite series and the use of infinite series in quadratures. That's the topic of the De Analisi, as a matter of fact. In this context, Leibniz steps in. Leibniz was a correspondent of Henry Oldenburg, the secretary of the Royal Society. And um, Leibniz was asking Oldenburg about uh, the discoveries of the British in mathematics, and he received uh, information about James Gregory, for instance, but also about uh, this bright mathematician in Cambridge, this young Lucasian professor. And Leibniz wanted to know more about Newton's mathematics. That's why <coughs> Newton, through Collins and Oldenburg, prepared a letter in 1676 for Leibniz. This letter was a public letter, if you like. So it was a letter that was sent to Leibniz via the secretary of the Royal Society. So it was a very official uh, communication. And uh, Newton so wrote this epistola, this uh, epistola prior, this first letter to Leibniz. What we find in the epistola prior, and the first letter, is interesting. It begins with a statement of the binomial theorem and um, continues by presenting all the results that are contained in the De Analisi, as a matter of fact. All the series, infinite series, for the trigonometric functions that Newton had. Now I am using the term trigonometric functions, which is a bad anachronism, of course. But uh, Newton had obtained these power series expansions and uh, had uh, made use of this series in order to rectify arcs of curves or calculate uh, sur curvilinear surfaces. So the epistola, the first epistola, is uh, interesting uh, for, I think, several reasons. One reason is that Newton reveals the binomial theorem, something that he had not included neither in the De Analisi nor in the De Methodis. The binomial theorem the binomial theorem is something that Newton found by guesswork. Uh, it is not proved by Newton. And Newton, even for the standards of his times, knew that the binomial theorem was guessed. Uh, but he was convinced that it was true, because it worked very well. Leibniz replied with a series of requests. How could you obtain this binomial series? And he had also other questions for Newton. Newton replied with a second letter, the Epistola Posterior also written in 1676. And uh, this Epistola Posterior is actually a very long, well-written mathematical essay. It's a little masterpiece. Newton answered all Leibniz's desiderata, providing, for instance, details or his own reconstruction on how he had achieved the binomial series, but uh, he also gave a rather complete uh, image of his results in many other fields of mathematics. He didn't say everything. He did not reveal the algorithm that allowed him to calculate tangents to curves. He did not reveal the direct method of fluxions, uh, but 
he, for instance, gave examples of difficult quadratures that he had achieved in the De Methodis. So it's true that Newton was hiding something, he was hiding the algorithm, but he was providing okay, a full account of his results on infinite series, no mysteries here, and um, a description of uh, the quadratures that he had achieved, we would say in Leibniz's terms, um, a brief description of the difficult integrals that Newton had achieved. There is something that Newton is hiding, but there is a lot that he is revealing too.